Um, I'm going to lighten things up a bit. I'm really looking at um, humor in research in my research recently and writing about humor specifically, uh, but also just I feel like a lot of us uh, needed some escape uh, during this pandemic. Um, my research areas tend to be in dress and popular culture. Um, I've met many of you at conferences, so I'm, it's great to see everybody virtually here. I'm working on interjecting more humor into my research, as I said, particularly dark humor, which is particularly close to my heart. Satire, irony, sardonicism as a way of a coping mechanism for me, but also I'm seeing it as a form of survival. Um, so I hope that you're able to laugh with me today because laughter is light to the soul. Okay. Here we see an infographic that communicates that social media usage has increased. Um, he, particularly, this is in April 2020, where we see social media's increase by 47%. And actually, this increase had began back in January, really early, when we first started hearing about COVID. Um, so that was probably happening in countries other than the United States. And then as soon as the United States started to lock down, we see that social media um, usage climb and climb. Um, it is being used as an escape from the isolation of the, of the lockdown. It connects you to friends, family, peers, colleagues, maybe too much to colleagues and work, as well as distracting us from the trappings of our home, which used to be our refuge from the world, but now it's our entire world. Consequently, social media has increased influence in and value to our lives. This paper explores the ways dark humor memes convey deeper sociocultural messages about dress, identity, dress and identity during a time of crisis, and perhaps even some agency. When the lockdown began, we started to see humorous memes on social media, particularly about um, hoarding toilet, toilet paper. And so there was a lot of humor being made about the um, ability to secure or uh, inability to secure toilet paper. So these gentlemen would obviously be a great catch because they have many rolls of toilet paper to share with any mate. There was also pandemic paranoia. Um, if anyone's familiar with the United States version of The Office, um, this is Dwight and Dwight literally has a quote that says that there needs to be less people in the world, so let's introduce a pandemic. And so he's all prepared and he has become quite the uh, focal point for many memes of surviving this pandemic through germophobia. The virtues of wearing a mask have been discussed through memes in humorous ways, particularly uh, villains, as, we, as many of you have shared, um, wear masks quite commonly. And so people have evoked particularly Darth Vader to help communicate this message um, clearer. Social distancing methods through types of dress. We've seen these memes surface on fashion um, historians unite and other dress sites, but I've seen this on um, just general feeds as well. And of course, there are some people that are even able to make the most of the socialized isolation because they're recognizing in their own selective isolation that happened before the pandemic. And even the queen helped out during her thoughtful expressions of compassion for a scared world by wearing a green dress that we could use as a green screen to project onto her the leader that we all need, such as Jean-Luc Picard, um, or the distraction we all need, the Tiger King, our favorite uh, video games that we're playing, and of course, even the virus, which has been presented in many respects as both a monster and an enemy we need to fight in war, which is important for where I'm going next. While all of the social media fodder seen here offer humor, in this presentation, I'm gonna explore the dark humor memes conveyed conveying social, deeper sociocultural messages about dress, agency, and identity in a time of crisis. In particular, this is the template that all the following memes are going to follow. Um, not long after the lockdown in the United States, my hours of work for each day increased significantly, and I was already putting in long hours. And I think this probably happened to a lot of teachers, in fact. 
Um, I found myself trying to escape moment from moment to moment, hopping on Facebook and other social media, which is not my normal means of escape, um, but it seemed to be working well since I was online so often. The humor I found there kept me coming back. I truly appreciated these memes in particular. They seemed to tap into my love of dark humor as well as my appreciation for dress and the nonverbal communication in dress. Jesse Beer and his book, The Rise and Fall of American Humor, suggests that during great tragedy or difficulty, people will turn to humor to cope and use dark humor where, as an expression of dark rage for miserable conditions, but it can also serve as perverse enjoyment to the same condition. The memes that I explore here follow this template. The left juxtapose the apocalyptic dress of the character versus the comfy clothes commonly worn during this pandemic right now. The Big Lebowski, who we see on the right side of these memes, is a favorite character for many of these memes because he's known for wearing a robe, flip-flops uh, or slipper type shoes out for everyday dress. We see him here in the dairy aisle shopping for cream for his favorite drink, a white Russian. I also do enjoy the, a white Russian myself. The humor of the Big Lebowski's appearance lies in seeing this private dress in public spaces, particularly in the grocery store. But I will leave that for others to discuss and others have done an excellent job in doing so. This meme's humor is ironic and sarcastic, noting that our dress is re reflective of the crisis we are currently experiencing, not the one we thought we would experience or fantasized we would experience. One that has isolated us at home where we're supposed to be our comfortable selves. I found myself seeking out of these particular memes over and over. And as I did so, I found the comparisons between the two images fascinating. I started to examine them almost out of instinct, researching dress for commonalities of the memes that were posted and liked by young and old alike. So we had multiple generations posting these memes. At first, examining the memes were obvious. There were obvious things available to me. Uh, first, I noticed that the text rarely changed. The left side was always what I wanted or expected to wear in an apocalypse fe featuring a character from Western popular culture, usually from a dystopian or apocalyptic kind of story. On the right side, it's how I'm actually dressed, although it's never actually the person themselves. And I would venture to say how they're feeling at that moment. But why these specific images, I kept asking myself, especially the images of the apocalyptic characters on the left side. I started wondering what was the underlying message that was really being communicated. Of course, it does give us a tiny vision into the person posting, but what more is being said? As I examined the images closer, I started to notice there were certain factors that might be considered masculine sexuality symbolically represented in the bodies and dress of the people on the left side. But then I came across this one. This is an image of Humongous um, from Max 2, a road warrior for from the United States. And while it's masculine, it kind of defies some of those stereotypical uh, sexy, sexy or sexual kind of imagery. Maybe it, it's a version of the mean that is meant to suggest a desire for cool clothes and gear. Or maybe it's the desire to have that adventure that's somehow promised within the clothing and gear. But for this type of adventure, it does seem rather dangerous for someone who's currently eating cereal for dinner in their pajamas. It is difficult to determine if this version of the meme fails or succeeds. Um, it includes Buffy the Vampire Slayer and the clothing that she uses when she fights someone is the clothing she would have worn every day. And she is willing, willing to take someone on even when a monster, vampire, and so on in her favorite sushi pajamas. It was this meme that gave me more insight into what might really be going on with these memes. While there's dark humor there, what's, what's really coming out is that because they're both holding guns, we can almost apply an alternate caption here. It's hard to appear powerful and menacing, even when brandishing weapons in your slippers and robe. 
The humor here hides the fear of the powerlessness and it reveals the desire to be safe and comfy in our pajamas and not need to be facing this crisis right outside our door. This, these memes communicate sartorial satire of power in, in a humorous way for the powerless. I conclude my presentation with this version of the meme because discussions about the internet must include cats. I'm pretty sure it's in a contract somewhere. Our disappointments during this pandemic manifest in our dress options. I call it pajama chic. Joseph Boskin in his book, Rebellious Laughter states, humor expands to meet the changing circumstances or suffering or it loses or it suffers the loss of relevance and communal purpose. These memes about dressing for COVID-19 pa virus pandemic offer wow, sorry, sarcastic and ironic visual comparisons of imaged, imagined dress versus actual dress, which are consumed and liked at, by our friends on social media, creating a type of ephemeral community around them. The obvious function of these objects of visual culture utilize humor to cope with fear, but these memes further communicate the importance of dress as nonverbal communication, agency, and identity construction, even if fictional, even if virtual. These dark humor memes convey deeper social cultural messages about dress and identity in a time of crisis, and even offer refuge in dark humor. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa, for, yes, for this fantastic and, uh, yeah, great presentation, actually, yes, it was a very uh, good moment to laugh, <laughs> and, yeah, uh, comments and, uh, comments and questions, so, yeah, yeah, absolutely, uh, Jenna, uh, please, question, Jenna Rossi Camus, comment, question? No, I'm muting yeah. my <laughs> Sorry, I'm not in my pajamas. Um, so, um, Teresa, thank you very much for that. Um, it's lovely to uh, make your acquaintance this way. So I'll come out as um, usually uh, sartorial, satirical is my area of specialty. Um, and specifically the dark humor. So I just hope we can connect. Maybe I can share um, some uh, work that I'm ongoing that I'm doing mostly about the um, uh, satire of subcultural dress, but also memes. And um, so it's really interesting that you've collected these memes that also the intersection of uh, film popular culture and fashion. Um, but I was also just wondering if there's a, alongside this you're looking because uh, strangely I've not been looking so much at memes, but I have been following the New Yorker cartoons, which is my area of, uh, of real focus. And I, I recall actually going back to the last US presidential election, there was a spate of cartoons about this idea, because also of Star Wars films at the time, that, um, that there was this idea about uh, women going out and starting the revolution um, and uh, wearing the, the, the costumes from Star Wars rendered by the cartoonists. Um, so I just think it's quite interesting um, to see, because I haven't, your paper made me think about analyzing it um, um, yeah, more formally, the, the, the interplay between the professional satirist and the quite do-it-yourself um, satire of the meme makers, which are not illustrated. So this, this, the reappropriation of uh, pop culture images and the meme, uh, and also art historical images usually, um, in fashion ones is, uh, is a really, really good to look at um, in this moment. And I think quite interestingly, there's hardly any masks in, in what you've shown today. So the kind of oh, ideas, right. the ideas about armor and gear other than Darth Vader and the villain um, is primarily um, what you're saying about the, the overall. Um, so yeah, just thank you really. And um, uh, is this your first look at memes as in, and dark humor or we call it relief humor as well? It is, it is my first look at that. I'm currently doing a huge book project on science fiction and dress. And so this is the tiny little piece of it. And when I saw the call come out, I was like, okay, I got it. <laughs> I'm going to pull this piece together. Um, and, it was, and it was a lot of fun. I, I really, truly love dark humor. And I'm afraid I offend everyone in my world because <laughs> how much I enjoy it. But I put my email in the um, thing in the chat. So yeah. please reach me, Jenna. Mm -hmm. I loved your presentation. It was fantastic. Thank you. 
thanks so much so yeah if, we'll talk more about because normally i'm 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 talking about jokes so um it's great to meet you yeah you too. great we have a question from joe turney hi theresa how are you doing hi joe hugs <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just wondering um, if you thought about how the memes uh, kind of reflected some kind of um, militarization of the pandemic. Certainly I had seen those memes, but I've also seen me not necessarily memes, but jokes, I suppose, which have said to people, you know, and, and obviously we've just we've just had uh, VE Day here. But it was a really big thing in the UK. Um, where people had said, you know, previously people had gone to war and had to sacrifice their lives. All you've got to do is sit on the sofa. And yes. I think that that kind of very obvious sense that we're not coping with sitting on the sofa um, is, is very important. Have you seen that, that kind of, is that kind of the idea that underpins things you were talking about? Absolutely. Um, just because of the length of the presentation, I just kind of hinted at it, but in the United States in particular, Trump has adopted a language that is particularly sociocultural and sociopolitically um, problematic, that this is our enemy and that he is our commander in chief during war. And um, uh, media likes that, they picked it up. And so at least in the States, we are getting a lot of this being represented in this military fashion. Now that we have this Black Lives Movement motion, movement that's happening, um, sorry, Black Lives Matter movement that's happening in the United States, we have political unrest in a way that um, I don't think the United States has seen since civil rights. And um, it's really causing difficulty. And so he's bunkered himself in. We're seeing military vehicles roll out in all of our major cities. I live in the capital of Michigan. I have seen military vehicle going down the road. I haven't left my house, but I can see it. So um, yeah, we've militarized this pandemic here in the United States, even before Black Lives Matter happened, and they use that as a reason to kind of roll it out into the streets. I definitely see that there is this masculine energy or masculine uh, power dynamic and symbolism in these images. Um, and I tried to keep it lighter, um, but because I really am trying to figure out ways to write humor into my research, um, I. I just, I just feel like it's time to do that for myself. But I agree with you, Joe. I think that there is a, a deeper underlying um, dystopic, uh, militarized uh, idea that's trying to be communicated to us. And unfortunately, even the liberal media has picked up this language and it is being rolled out in this way that people that are working in hospitals and essential workers are frontline workers, which is language we borrow from military. You know, it, it's, it's challenging. Uh, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, it seems like the same rhetoric is like, you know, employed here because uh, we have this militarization of um, rhetoric about COVID. Just yesterday, the mayor of Moscow said that we have conquered actually uh, COVID <laughs> and coronavirus <laughs> and started to, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yes. So, and started to open Moscow very quickly nobody expected it would actually happen that fast and it's all political for sure it has nothing to do with actual you know coronavirus mm, thank you so much uh teresa and actually there is a, a comment from uh julia petrov uh science fiction and dress please contact me myself and gudrun whitehead have that uh, as an idea for a future project so yeah good that's that's why conferences are, are organized you're making great connections, yeah, Lydia. Okay, yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. I love this. Uh, okay, uh, yes, and Jana says that actually same in the UK with Boris Johnson wanting to be Winston Churchill uh, parallels with Second World War, uh, really abused by media.